Today on the Cooler Games Living Room FC Edition, we are talking about all the drama going on in Liga MX. All right, and there's we, some going on in MLS too. Okay, so there's a lot. <laughs> this pandemic is affecting people uh, in, a, in a lot of different ways and affecting right. the leagues in, in wild ways. Also, Alexis, who do we have on the show? We got Chessy Cabarcas all the way from Barranquilla, Colombia. That's right, going to your living room right now. And plus, we got a lot more on the Cooler, Cooler Games. You sounded like uh, you know a, a, a hype a, a hype man who holds their microphone mad <laughs> close. I hate when comedians do that. They put their hand over there, and it's like, bro, you're not dropping bars. This ain't a rap battle. Hold the mic like a professional, will you? Look at uh, us, baby. Still living room FC. Still being heroes. Staying exactly. home, eating everything in the cupboards. Okay, yeah, that's uh, you know, you. I think you get a medal for that. I <laughs> purple heart or enlarged heart. It's one of the two. Depends okay. on what's in your cupboards, dog. <laughs> I'll take either. Uh, I already uh, got hello. one of them. Hello, everyone. Welcome uh, to the show. Welcome to the Cooligans. Uh, my name is Christian Polanco. That's right, it is. And I'm Alexis Guerreros. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, your R's have some respect for, for the 37 R's in my last name, my G. So, uh, hello. Uh, yes, uh, we are the Cooligans. Uh, we are your favorite stand up comedians that host the funniest soccer show that you have ever seen. And it happens to be in our living rooms. Uh, That's right. And it's also the blood clot gulliest. <laughs> that that is a, a correct. All right, we are a Jamaican internationals <laughs> That's now. That's right, yo. <laughs> Was good. <laughs> uh, now, nah, man, we're uh, excited about uh, t uh, today's show. Uh, we have an incredible guest uh, today of uh, of played for the the Colombian national team. Uh, That's right. Played for a, a host of different uh, clubs. Uh, New York, Dina. Uh, that's right. Uh, half Colombian, half Dominican. That's uh, right. A hundred percent badass. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and um, uh, and you've seen her on La Liga. Uh, a lot of La Liga social media channels doing a bunch of great stuff uh, for yeah, them. We'll get we to her. We'll get yeah, to yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. Here's a question. Chelsea Cabarcas. That's what you're going to say. Here's a question. We don't, we've been asking. We're talking to so many people. I don't get to ask. Christian, how you doing? Uh, uh, Alexis, frankly, I'm struggling. Uh, okay. Thank you for asking. Yeah, that's what I'm okay. here for. Th this is when I cry on television. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> we, listen, it's not Sweep Weeks yet. Sweep Week yet. But I got to be honest, I don't think Sweep Week exists anymore. So go ahead and cry. Uh, no, no, the rules in television are completely gone. No, no. Yeah. Sweep Week is when kids wake up and go on TikTok now. So we got to start, you know, we got to start doing some dance challenges, yo. Boom, boom. All right. <laughs> you, I, you, I smack you in the butt. And then I go. <laughs> That's how this works. So look, yeah, we're trying to maintain our sanity during this uh, during this quarantine. I know, it, at least in in uh, New York and New Jersey, they've uh, they've extended the stay at home orders for uh, another thirty days, essentially. So, or at least fifteen more days than right. it was supposed to end. In New York, uh, it's called stay at home. In Jersey, it's called hey, stay up. Will you? <laughs> it's a little different. Hey, you want to get uh, yeah. smacked on the head, you yeah. mama Luke? <laughs> what? It's called, hey, what the hell are you doing outside? <laughs> uh, you're going to be one of these guys, you know? <laughs> yes, and that's like bylaw four, line three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like the people reading it. Like, is this really what we're going to call it? Is this... <laughs> You want to call it something else? Uh, oh, you got you got something better? <laughs> Are you saying I'm long in the tooth? <laughs> uh, no, uh, look, still, uh, even though uh, we're all stuck at home, uh, everybody's trying to figure out, uh, you know, on, on a serious note, what to do with, uh, you know, how to save the most uh, lives, and uh, but also in the soccer world, people are trying to, people keep asking, when, when is soccer coming back, man? They're asking it, us, it, like we know, <laughs> like, like we, as if, as if FIFA is like, we got to make. Sure, we update those two comedians. <laughs> okay, <laughs> because yeah, yeah, yeah. You, obviously, you know their 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 platform is massive, and people <laughs> people really need to. You know, they're the they're the pipeline to to all this news. Right. No, and man. Fontaine's like, quick, get me Christian and Alexis <laughs> well, have on you the seen, bat phone. Have like, you it's seen? It's not a bat phone anymore. 
Have you seen Infantino uh, on? Uh, he's been doing uh, Instagram uh, lives with uh, with different players. He was doing. He did one with uh, Ronaldo. Uh, that's right. R nine. He did recently. Fat uh, Ronaldo. Yeah, fat, fat, yeah. That's what they call him, Fat Ronaldo. Yeah, that's is that, is that how you relate to your heroes? <laughs> I've been speaking of heroes, <laughs> Fat Ronaldo. My man still played him and Guatemar Blanco. Thank you, yo. <laughs> and and Alex Morgan because I have her body right now. By the way, shouts to her. She's like, I think she's like eight months pregnant right now. Yeah, she's very, due very soon. Yeah. yeah, dude. She just still, put up a picture of her belly. Huge, yo. Still, still training. Uh, she is crushing it. She was doing the the what's that the the it's like the it, it's like a big it was a barbell. Is that what it's called? No, a kettlebell. Kettlebell. That's right. Kettle chips. Now we're yeah, talking. That's... <laughs> <laughs> that's what I be doing, bro. I be living them joints. Right my... Actually, you know what? I did have a new brand of kettle chips. I don't know the brand name, but it's hot pepper and vinegar. Yo, shouts to you, whoever made that. It was amazing. <laughs> Google it. I'm not a fan of vinegar chips. They're, you, they're too... I, you and I it's, are couldn't it's... be further from the same when it, it comes smell, to food. It smells too. It's too much of a strong smell. Oh, Your that's breath food. stinks. Food has flavor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, good point. I'm glad. I'm look. I'm glad we got to the vinegar uh, kettle chips. Uh, we went from Infantino <laughs> to kettle <laughs> chips pretty quickly. I'm not gonna lie to you. Look, a seamless. All right. Yeah, we're getting. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of seamless, I'm hungry. <laughs> um, but yes, we're, we're so there's, there. There has been a lot of news uh, in uh, in soccer, and uh, we don't know when soccer is coming back. I think the first league to return will probably be the Bundesliga. Uh, the and, first major and, league, because I think Turkmenistan is going to come back with no fans. Ooh, Turkmenistan. Yeah, right. yeah. I'm definitely on top of that. I right. got <laughs> someone is feverishly searching FIFA for the Turkmenistan. Well, you know, they, we were talking about uh, Belarus and, and their league, but there's there's people. The so Belarus has not sold the TV rights. Uh, nobody's bought the TV rights anywhere. Um, nobody's oh. wanted the TV rights. <laughs> I, I think they took a quick peek at the league and they were like, I don't know, if we can air this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're playing by the same rules. <laughs> there's a there's a cow out there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and it's not a Ford Madison game, I tell you that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the um, uh, but somebody has been, and I wish I could remember their username, but on Twitch, somebody has been got they've gotten the feed for for the Belarusian league, and they are doing their own commentary for uh, for the games, which has been getting. I watched I watched maybe like 15 minutes of it, and literally they're they're basically like uh, you know there's when there's a bad call, the they, they were like oh well clearly this refs on the take. You know, whatever yeah, they like, yeah, it's really, and I'm, but I'm sure it does not is not does not sound very different than the actual commentary <laughs> from yeah. Belarus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I bet you even the refs like, guys, I'm on the take. You knew this was gonna happen. <laughs> All right. Well, we got we do have a lot of uh, Liga MX and MLS news to discuss. So we'll be back with more right after this. Welcome back. So, uh, a couple things uh, to go through. Big subjects, right? We we think, uh, oh, no soccer's going on, but no, it's, it seems like the the you suits know, the, are still playing. The you suits know I mean? are, are really They're like playing Ooh. games, <laughs> especially if it's in Mexico. <laughs> They're like, mm, what can we do to turn uh, make this you know the the turn soccer like, upside down? How could we remind people that we're kind of evil? <laughs> what could we? No, do? so one, one of them uh, that, that we have to uh, discuss is um, the the possibility this was a uh, this was uh, so after the news came out so if you if you're not aware Liga MX has uh, already announced that they they have suspended promotion relegation for the next five years five uh, years so uh, yeah obviously that will send people you know the the, the soccer truthers uh, mad uh, <laughs> and people are taking it really well you know <laughs> uh, no but you know uh, Mexico they deal with the same issues uh, at, at least financially that uh, every other league has to kind of go through and and it's not like even though there's promotion relegation uh so a weird version of it in in mexico it doesn't mean that uh you know every league every club makes a ton of money and that that you know how many clubs fold and it, it, it's incredibly common so and there is especially in the uh, in the Asensio, which is the second division tons of clubs do fold but there are some like leones negros which has gone out and they spent a ton of money on development academies a women's team they've pretty much prepared themselves for a promotion and now they're like, why am I getting punished? Yeah. Yada, yada, yada. But this came out in an article, which also said that Atlas and uh, Santos Laguna have 
the same owner, which seems mm. a bit of a conflict of interest. <laughs> I'm just going to put that out there. Maybe I'm wrong. And if that person is powerful, I'll shut my mouth. <laughs> but he said in the article, uh, Irarragorri. I believe is how you pronounce his last name. He stated that MLS generates a higher annual revenue than Liga MX, and that type of investors and uh, soli- and that the type of investors and solidity of the league bodes well for future growth. Hold up, Liga MX makes a ton of money. They're 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 a flashy league. They pay their players a lot of money, right? How is it that MLS makes so much more money, but they don't do that paying their players a lot of money stuff? Well, I think the if you think about the revenue, you you they, they, you probably have to consider the expansion fees uh, in in that revenue. So is that mar- is that earmarked as revenue though? I don't know how accurate that statement is to begin with, but if 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 I'm believing that it is true, well, it's I'm- on the internet, Christian. So, I mean. <laughs> so, but if I'm believing that it is true, I'm going to, I'm going to take that into consideration and, and expansion fees are not a, a, a real, you know, it's not, it's not consistent money that you'll know you'll be getting year after year. It's not like a TV contract or anything like that. So, but he did mention the, the, it seems like the, the Liga MX and MLS are becoming, the, the, you, you're hearing more positive, uh, you know, there's a little bit of flirting uh, going on and it do, it does feel like and this has been another it's like rumor. when your significant other is like you know that guy he's so funny you're like oh okay. oh really <laughs> oh we got we got a lot of positive opinions all of a sudden <laughs> you know two days ago you didn't know where he was I right? know, so you think his car is dope <laughs> I'm so, only joking by the way we're not monsters <laughs> so the the rumor is um, that that the, that this uh, is shedding a light on uh, uh, on the rumor or possibility that Liga MX and MLS could actually merger or merge uh, and become uh, one North American uh, league. Um, to, now to look, some I don't want I don't want promotion relegation to go away for Liga MX. I want those teams to be able to. Although they really didn't have it, they had like a weird, confusing version of it. Um, yeah. But but I'm not gonna lie. A Liga MX MLS merger would be lit as hell. That would be lit. No. It would be pretty wild. I don't know logistically how in the w- hell it would work. Uh, Who cares? But, <laughs> but it would be fun. Uh, uh, without that, seeing seeing games uh, y- again, it would have to be some sort of two divisions similar i mean we have leagues cup which is i think that that is the 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 appetizer that that's a like oh let me see if people if people people are really interested in this and then you know for the main course which Got is uh, this cup <laughs> yeah well it's like no well not you gotta fly to mexico for a weekday match you know yeah. <laughs> so it's gonna be uh it, it, yeah it, uh, look i don't know if it, if it w- will or will, will not happen but i, I th- this this time seems to be a, a a, a, a real um, thing that they can do to like, oh, like put the ideas out there. You know what I mean? Yeah. At the very least. All right. Well, yeah. we got more with Chelsea after this. And here we are. Huh? We say we got amazing guests and it doesn't stop. Right. <laughs> this is what we do. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I'm excited about uh, about today's guest um, because not only is uh, not only is she calling in, but she's calling in from Colombia. From Colombia, uh, and I wore my Colombia shirt. Right. That's Which, right. Look how big this is now, huh? <laughs> Your boy, <laughs> intermittent fasting. Let's go. Uh, but you don't. <laughs> uh, let me explain who this person is. You've been a guest on our show. Good friend. You've seen her on, on social media all over the place. Where is she today? Could it be Italy? Could it be Colombia? Could it be yeah. New York City? She's we a, don't know. She's the new, she's the new Carmen San Diego, I Yo, think. <laughs> freaking flyer miles all over the place. <laughs> she's got status with every airline. Ladies and gentlemen, unless you're unless you're driving, which why are you? You should be in your house. Put your hands together for the one, the only Chelsea Cavarca. Let's go. Hey guys, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. This actually forced me to get up this morning and work out early because I was like, all right, I gotta be on time. I gotta be on time. You don't know how bad Alexis feels that he made anybody work out. Trust yeah, me. Yeah, honestly, I, I'm gonna send an apology letter. Uh, <laughs> I should be getting it in the mail in about seven weeks. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just the laziest. The thing is, there's no hot water here. 
So I try to limit my showers to like twice a day rather than having like three showers. <laughs> I was like, all right, I got to strategize this. I have to work out. Yeah, so yeah. Shower again. Wait, can we go over why there's no hot water? Because I'm in Colombia. Yeah, that's I'm, a, I'm, there's it, no hot it, water. In Dominican Republic, when I when I stay with my family, yeah, there's no hot water. That's how that's how you live. It's stress. I mean, I'm grateful. I'm extremely grateful. Yes. <laughs> the situation I'm in. Um, I know it's hot here, but you know what? I like having the option of having hot water and cold water. <laughs> just a, just a little bit to offset the frigidness. Although you know, I'm seeing what people are starting to post on Instagram and on Twitter, and a couple people could use some cold showers out in New York City. Let me tell you, <laughs> it's starting to get a little late. We've been locked in for a little too long. Some people, some people are starting to fall in love with a certain pillow or something. It's insane out here. <laughs> um, but what it, where what um what brought you to Colombia? I know the last time we spoke, you were looking at possibly going to Italy for a little bit. I see you doing some. Yeah. So you're doing a like a basically like almost like a social media show as well uh, for La Liga. So what are you doing in Colombia right now? Um, well, I actually got called to come in for preseason for junior for the team in Barranquilla. Um, I really wanted to go back to Europe. That was like in my dreams. I was just like trying to like manifest it, but it just didn't happen, unfortunately. Um, and I kind of decided I was like, you know what? Being that I think this is going to be my last year playing, I rather end it. Um, in Colombia, where it's like my country, well, my dad's country, and especially in the culture where I'm in Barranquilla, so my family's from Cartagena, and that's the Atlantic, like the Caribbean part of everything. So I was like, I'd rather just end my career there, you know, where my dad's from. So yeah, yeah. Okay. That's pretty that's dope. I'm here. I know yeah, and I'm, I'm still they've... trying to work. I'm, I'm trying to work as well, um, where I'm still doing the La Liga stuff. They've right. been extremely lenient with me where I can film at home where I go into a studio and I film content. That's really All cool. Right. Are you, what is it? What is it like? What are you doing right now? Are you still training for the potential season? Have they canceled the season completely? Yeah. Everything is up in the air, right? Like no one knows what's going to happen. Um, they were already having an issue with the league just because obviously women's soccer, it's not as strong as, male soccer, you know, for the men's team. So um, it was kind of all over the place as it was. So now it's like extremely all over the place and we don't have any answers. So I'm kind of controlling what I can control and I'm training on my own and waiting for some type of answer. Jeez. All right. All right. Uh, well, the last time you were, uh, it's interesting because the last time you, when you did our podcast, uh, you were on our last show where we announced that we were getting a TV show. Yeah. Uh, and now you're on the TV show. Like, oh, it's, it's, uh, it's super exciting. Congratulations, guys. Yeah. And we got another <laughs> announcement. No, we don't. No, we don't. <laughs> I'm pregnant. That's uh, crazy. Isn't that a world? I didn't know. Science, my guy. Stop it. <laughs> okay. This quarantine is affecting people a little differently. All right. <laughs> also, he lives near a nuclear reactor. Uh, <laughs> Although, you know what? I have seen this quarantine as much as it's, there's a lot of people dying in the world and it's extremely sad. It's also a really good time to reflect. I know I sound like yeah. I sound like one of those spiritual people, yeah. but I was running. I've, I've been running every day and I was like, you know what? It like we had to slow down. You know, everyone is kind of forced to stay in and spend time with spend time with their families and just kind of reflect on their own ideas and what they want to do with their lives, you know, put things into perspective. So I think this is kind of also a blessing in disguise besides um, all the lives being lost. Yeah, yeah well, at least there's it, an opportunity to turn it into something positive if you can, you know? Yeah, because people have been talking about uh, just how this is going to affect sports in, in general. Like, people are, are saying, like, where, you know, these seasons are going to be cut short or, like, um, they're, they're going to find different formats to, like, uh, you know, have players playing again. What do you think? Yeah. What, what do you think this the, the this uh, pandemic, like, how will it change women's soccer? Like, because something, w w whether it's, like, uh, like I, I um, what's her name? Sabrina, Sabrina Ionescu um, got uh, the number one pick in the WNBA draft. Her and then jersey were, sold yeah. out. 
New Jersey sold out, and then there, you know, there, there wasn't uh, enough. It, there was a there was a shortage of kits, but even though people are kits jerseys, right? Like I'm, now, <laughs> soccer is like infused in every part of my yeah. life. But <laughs> red <laughs> card to that manufacturer, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> but it seems like this is an opportunity for um, women, women sports in general to to kind of uh, put its like best foot forward and being like, because once this is all over, I feel like sports is going to look different in general uh and maybe this is an opportunity for women's sports uh, to, this, to make a yeah, change i think this this all made everyone realize that we're all human right even if you're an athlete even if you're a male athlete you're a messi or you are a falcao they're human and they're going through the exact same thing that everyone else is going through to the point that these men like the the teams they're actually helping sponsor the women's side which is great you know they're trying to support us because they know that we're not getting paid as much and there's also some leagues that aren't getting paid at all, like the Columbia League. We've been here, we were in the middle of preseason, and they still hadn't paid us. And the men's team is kind of helping out with that. Um, I also think this is a time where women are, <laughs> we're planning and plotting. Oh, yes. <laughs> <Our next move. laughs> Yo, Mr. Burns. <laughs> no, I think I, You sound like you're behind someone with a knife. You're just like plotting. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I think I, I think now with like social media and everything happening and obviously everyone posting content, which is which is also um, a blessing that we have social media. Right. Because we're yeah. able to all stay connected and kind of follow up on what she's doing or how's her workout or the league. You know, um, I think it's it, everything's going to change. You know, there's going to be a different there's going to be respect behind the women's game as well. Okay. Sure. Hope so. it's, the same, it's the same type of puzzle. You know, we're, we're going through the exact same thing as, as the men's team. Yeah. yeah. We got more with Chelsea when we get back after this. We are back with Chelsea Cavarcas. And Chelsea, you were talking about uh, uh, having the, the, the men's team help uh, support uh, the women's team in this time. Like, the, I, I, we talked about this when you were on the podcast, and we had also spoken uh, with uh, Colombian international uh, Melissa Ortiz about this as well, about the issues uh, when it comes to uh, supporting the women's teams uh, and, and for the, for the simple you know reality of just being paid, why why is it a necessity still that the men's team has to help the women's team? Like why why is the scenario there exactly? Um, I don't know to be honest. I, I think it's just they don't know how to budget themselves. Um, <laughs> they don't have enough sponsors as well. How their jerseys uh, are completely don't. covered. <laughs> they, look, they look like NASCARs. How many more companies do you need? <laughs> that is true. That is true. Um, Let's put a fifth one I, on I the back of the it. shorts. Let's go. Like, um, no, they just don't have. At least for the women's side, they don't have enough um, sponsors. Last time I heard with the league, the reason why it kind of got delayed to start was because they didn't have a sponsor. And they were like, all right, they made the announcement that the league was going to start. But then they were like, OK, but we can't find a sponsor. And I'm like, OK, I think you're supposed to find a sponsor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then make the announcement. That's like me saying, I'm but buying a Benz. Does anyone have money I could borrow from <laughs> for a bank? Exactly. <laughs> I, maybe I Perfect said those two comparison. things yeah, not in order. You know? <laughs> Perfect comparison. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like I said, Thank God that the men actually see the importance behind the women's game and they respect us as well. Because uh, they, they know what goes they know what goes behind it. They sometimes see us walking out into the field. It, dep it depends what um, team you're on. But I know with Junior, we also have the same um, training facilities. You know, so they're able to see us going on after, you know, they get off the field and we're the, at the second best field, obviously not their field, but they see what we go through, you know, the treatment. So, and the relationships and stuff yeah. really do help. I, I, I think it's also just money management and the higher ups. I played. Uh, I played against uh, Junior uh, in FIFA. Somebody picked. I was playing online, and they picked Junior. I'd never heard of the team at the time, and I lost to them. So, you know, this this interview is a little bit difficult for me right now. All right, because. <laughs> 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 right, right. 
<laughs> you know what I really want to talking about video games. You know what I really want to learn. I really want to learn how to play FIFA. I've never played FIFA ever. I know. Well, it's, don't ask Alexis. Yeah, he's yeah. terrible. I'm trash. <laughs> I am getting better though. I'm now in the seventh division. <laughs> so I'm working my way up, baby. <laughs> uh, yeah, I want to get on that. I think yeah. that's a good thing to do during quarantine. All right. I mean, right. I like how you're going to start sliding towards what I do. You want to play video games? Pretty soon you're going to figure out what Doritos are. It's going to be lit. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be super you're going to well, stop waking up early to work out. It's going to be great. Well, that it, it, it's interesting because, uh, you know, being that you also work in, in media, uh, you know, the, the, that landscape is also changing now, right? Like the, this, the, yeah. the, this whole, this virus is changing how everyone, either you lose your job or you're working from home or, you, you know, now people, everybody has a ring light now. Everybody yeah. needs one, yeah. right? <laughs> so, you know, podcast <laughs> microphones are back ordered now on Amazon. Amazon. Are you serious? So, yeah. what the hell's going on? They told us it was a waste of time. And look at yeah. this. Now we look have all the equipment. We live, we're the government now. Speaking, <laughs> yeah, speaking about that, everyone has a podcast. Yesterday I was on Zoom during like a brunch party. My friend had like a brunch party. And two of her friends got on Zoom with like a whole podcast setup. And I'm like, yeah. what the F is this? Are you guys yeah. serious? You either got a podcast or you got an OnlyFans. What are you yeah. doing? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Right? We're but CNN no, now. <laughs> this is the Guano News right. Network. Oye, chico, déjame decirte lo que pasó. You mentioned uh, that this is, you feel like this, or at least you're saying this is your last season playing soccer. Uh, one, I, you kind of, you kind of hinted towards that the last time you were on our show. What brought about that decision? Was it difficult? And what do you see uh, for yourself moving forward? This, it, it, this all might change, right? Everything changes. We've met you, Chelsea. Um, we know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One second. One second. Oh, wait, hold on. I got an email. <laughs> yeah, I got an email. Sorry, I gotta go. <laughs> So bad being a new yorker you're so used to multitasking wanting to do a thousand things at once and that's what i suffer from i want to do everything at once but um back to your question um it, it took me a lot i think this time right now i have really taken these few weeks to reflect and kind of just think about what is it that i really want um that chapter in my life is slowly coming to an end as painful as, as it is for me i've obviously had ha have had moments where I'm just like, crap, is this even possible? Like, do I look stupid even trying to come back, come back after my injury, you know, or crap, I haven't made a team in like two years. It it's all been extremely hard for me to process when in reality, it wasn't me as a player. It's not that I'm not talented enough. It's not that, no, it's just, obviously there's other situations that go behind that, right? The politics yeah, of the yeah. game and <laughs> things like that. And it makes you fall out of love with the game. You know, and I think like right now during these past few weeks that I've been in this house, um, I've kind of told myself, I'm like, you know what? There's other things that I want to do with my life. Um, for instance, as in broadcasting and things like that, I'm like, I really want to help people. I want to, I think right now it's bigger than, than myself. You know, I want to be able to motivate others and I use my sport for that, right? What motivated me was, hey, I want to show little girls or kids in general that they can go ahead and conquer anything that they put their mind to. And you know what? No one can say, you can't do this. You know, it's impossible. It's physically, it's, yeah, sometimes it's physically impossible. But um, if you work hard and you put your mind to something, you're going to be able to succeed, right? And that's, that's what drove me. And during that journey, I was able to motivate others, right? So it was kind of like a bounce. We bounce back. Boomerang. <laughs> bounce yeah. off of each other. Um, and now I was like, all right, well, I can, I can still do that, but now I can interview or I can talk to other athletes and we can talk about mental toughness. We can talk about nutrition. We can talk about different things. You know, I'm lucky where I have different platforms and something that I studied yeah. and something that I, uh, what I was, want to do. What right? was the, uh, so, the injury? You, it was an ACL. What was the injury you had? My first one was everything. My ACL, MCL, PCL. My oh, so okay. All with knee explosion. Um, you got, yeah. Yeah. Big old L. Yeah, it was a knee explosion. <laughs> but the thing is, is that the first one, um, I didn't recover. I was part of that 1% where I didn't recover. Like, I, I, I wasn't able to recover. My ligaments didn't catch. So, um, and also I couldn't bend my knee. 
So that kind of extremely delayed yeah. the process. I had to go back in. And then my third one, <laughs> let's <laughs> fast track the words. Um, my third one was, I think, the worst out of all of them, where I didn't feel injured. I was fine, but because of so much rehab and so much um, strengthening, my muscles were like, that's what was holding on to my ligament. Um, so I went into surgery and they ended up operating both legs because <laughs> they needed to take a tendon out of the other one. So I woke up not knowing that they were going to operate on both legs. I had no idea of this. Whoa. Uh, yeah. They told me the first, like when I first went in, it was like, listen, we're just going to tighten your ligament. It just didn't catch. You know, it's unfortunate. You were trying to rush back for the world cup. That's what it was. Um, and you rushed your rehab process like that. That's what it was. And he was like, you'll be back in two months. We're just going to go in there and adjust the ligament. I was like, all right, cool. He goes in there. <laughs> you wake up in traction. <laughs> yeah, like also, I yo, later. Yeah. Yeah, like your gallbladder was I all messed up. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Bro, I freaked out. Yeah. I freaked out. I literally start. I, I screamed. It was, it was that. Like I woke up five hours later with both legs. I was like, oh my gosh, he operated the wrong leg. Oh my god. Yeah. What yeah. Did I do? And yeah, he came in. He was like, "Listen, you're not going to be able to play for two years. Jeez. He's like, you're not going to be, you're not going to be back to normal 100 percent until two years." Wow. Um, and imagine, like, right before that, like a month before that, I was not even a few weeks before that, I was going to sign a contract with Adidas. I was going to sign my professional contract. I was with the national team, so it was a difficult pill to swallow. <laughs> for sure, we got more with Chelsea when we get back after this. Chelsea Camarcus and her two bionic knees at this point. Uh, <laughs> 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 you, you, Seriously, they are two bionic know, knees. You ever though. see the new emoji of like the robot flexing arm? They need to have one of a knee for you. <laughs> Just like a robot yeah, like. Definitely. When you look definitely. at, uh, so you've talked about how you want to inspire people and, and how you want to work more media. Uh, let's say the the worst case scenario soccer doesn't come back for another year or so and maybe you miss that window of of your final year what is wh where do you see yourself in five years do you see yourself doing something more in the media side do you see yourself doing something more on a social media side because everything is changing christian mentioned it before everything is changing like who knows tv might not be a thing like tv might be just on our phones like who knows right i mean i'm in my living room and i'm on tv so this is pretty dope like what do you see yourself doing do you know do you know what's insane is that in front of me I have my five year that I was writing. Also, you you, you write so it's crazy that you write like a teenager. You write like everything you write is your name and the guy you are in love with's last name and a heart <laughs> around it. That's how you write. Jesse, Jesse, Jesse that's do you put I little hearts around the eyes? Uh, <laughs> that's how you dot your eyes. I put no, I. But you know what? I always draw hearts all around my paper, my paper, like my paper, my paper everything I'm writing. I've always done that shape. That's what is, what is on that list? I'm curious. Are you allowed, are you able to say? Um Yeah, I mean I can say okay. that. Um I one of my goals, I really want to write a book. It's something I've I've wanted to do for quite some time now. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never really vocally said it out loud. It felt dumb. Not dumb, but I was like, people are gonna judge me. Like, what are you gonna write a book about? I'm like, I kind of want to write a lifestyle book, you know, recipes, um, stuff about health. And I'm really passionate about um, mentality, you know, having that mentality to push forward and just trying to be okay with yourself. Um, I think me being an athlete and always being under the eye, right, and modeling and broadcasting in football, I've always been not judged per se, but for as long as I could remember, I've always had people judging me where it's like, all right, you're not good enough in that. Or, hey, uh, you gained a few pounds. Uh, you have to go do extra fitness uh, because you need to bring down your body fat. And that's for, that's for football, not for modeling. <laughs> um, so the, and, and being a woman, that's really tough, right? That's, that's something tough to swallow growing up during those years where you're not really sure about yourself. I'm still not sure about myself, but... 16, 17, 18, you're kind of in that space where you're confused. Um, so I think being okay up here 
is extremely important. So that's why I want my, my book. Well, to be you about. know, I, and I'll, I'll say this because, like, I, I would read this book because uh, I think this is uh, it's a serious subject, and and I think for um, even for men to understand, uh, even though some men go through that exact thing, but I think a man who may not go through it and are with uh, a woman who does, you're like we've spoken to uh, athletes who who talk about that, like body dysmorphia uh, and 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 those kind of struggles. And it's interesting because you are an, an athlete, also you do modeling, and you're in media, so you're like in all these <laughs> avenues for people to be like to be incredibly critical. Yeah, yeah, extremely critical. But it's not even it's not even like the body body image, right? It's like, I, I also go through these moments where um, even when I'm interviewing someone, right? It's funny because people, people come up to me and they're like, what? You're a confident hell. I'm like, no, I'm not. I feel like I sound like an idiot when I'm talking. <laughs> I want to sound like Oprah. Um, but these are little voices that everyone has in their mind, right? And that's just you being okay in your own skin. Um, that's something that I love about you guys, right? You guys are just unapologetically you and you say whatever the hell comes to your mind. You're like, that's what's coming out. Yeah. And, and I'm funny and I know I'm funny, you know? Well, that's why I would uh, never write a book because if I started writing a book and I gave it to someone to read, the, they'd be like, oh, you're writing a children's book. I'd be like, nope, never doing that again. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess it wasn't supposed to be a children's book, but I guess just that's the way I write, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Well, well, yeah, I just like, just as an athlete, just being okay in your skin and understanding that your journey is your journey, right? Don't compare yourself to others. I know this sounds extremely cliche and everyone says that, but it's extremely true. You know, I can't sit here and compare myself to Melissa Ortiz. Yes, we played on the same teams. Yes, we're around the same age, but her journey, it was way different than mine. You know, right. I got injured. She, she got injured later on in life, you know? Yeah. So, and, and I love what she's doing now. Um, so yeah, I, I had those moments where I, I would compare myself and I feel bad for myself and that's just like the victim mentality, but you have to just snap out of it. And I feel like everyone goes through that. So yeah, yeah, really yeah. Three, three different that. things you do. You're under a high level of scrutiny. That's tough. I mean, you know, l luckily we're comedians, so no one expects us to be hot. No one expects us to be skinny. No one expects us to play well. You know, it doesn't matter if I've done exercise. Uh, They're like, it's great, that I, it's great that I'm all three of those things. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it's also like a hit on your ego, right? Um, well, for me, like playing, for instance, um, it like I would train every day. That's one thing. I'm extremely diligent with my training and I'm, just, I'm extremely on top of my training. But what something what, something that people don't know about me is that when I'm under a high level of stress or I feel like I'm not performing to my ability because under pressure, I sometimes I, I crack sometimes, you know, I freak out because of my injuries where I'm just like, shit, I'm not, sorry. No, um, no. I'm not, I'm not good enough or, or I, I, meanwhile, I'm running the same miles as the next girl next to, you know, the, the girl yeah, next yeah. to me. Um, so I eat out of anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> I just start eating and eating and eating. So these are just things that everyone deals with. Um, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I, 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 it's interesting to me just because, like, I mean, look, if, uh, to being frank, like, if you, if you are a heterosexual man and, and dated any woman, you've probably been, in the, you've been with people who, who, who deal with this stuff, and sometimes, yeah. you, even for me, sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't know how to be supportive because I don't know, I, it's difficult to kind of like empathize, uh, you know, all, all the time with this stuff, and it, and it's easy to be like. Um, dismissive or insensitive and be like walk it off what are you wearing you, you, you know, know yeah, you look you great you're beautiful <laughs> you know what's worse is that being with an athlete i think it's extremely it's, it's different because we're very competitive we're never okay with just with what we have not i mean everyone's like that but we're extremely competitive yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's extreme you know it's like all right Hey, let's go for a 20 minute jog. No, let's go for a 45 minute jog. I have to be sweating. You know, my lungs have to be coming out of my chest. So, um, so yeah, but that, that's one thing I want to do. Um, I really want to be on a network, uh, for like an NBC. I want to do analyst work. Um, hopefully on the men's side, I know it's extremely difficult, but that's, that's what I, I want to be more like on the serious side of things okay. and being able to just travel and talk to kids build soccer fields for kids that are underprivileged which is something that i'm doing right now oh that's dope um, all right <laughs> that's a well, good uh that's a good five-year plan yeah you're getting a lot more done than we are trust yeah, me my five-year <laughs> plan just has like dorito stains on it so i gotta <laughs> i gotta work on that we got more with chelsea when we get back after this <laughs> Even more with 
Robert, Kelsey Gavarkas. Thank you so much for sitting and talking with us. Um, I've said your name both in the American accent and the Spanish accent. I'm pretty impressed with myself. <laughs> yeah, hey, we're here with Chelsea Gavarkas. Um, so you, you're how long have you been in Colombia now? I've been here yeah. <laughs> for two months. No, I actually went back home for like two days. So all together, I've been here for like three months. Is there one thing that you wish, like, and obviously family, who cares? I'm talking about like food maybe or something from New York uh, that you wish you had. Let's talk about food. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, yes. like, Dude, I am craving, craving a slice of pizza. I love pizza. Yeah. Anyone that knows me knows I, my last meal, pizza. Yeah. <laughs> But pizza from Flushing, I love pizza. That's what I've been wanting. And I want crawfish. Oh, and I want chicken and waffles. <laughs> you, got, okay. you got a whole... Which, by the way, people don't know this. Chicken and waffles invented in New York. So you're welcome. You're welcome, South. I'm, not a, I'm yeah. not a huge fan of chicken and waffles. I feel like that it's a weird combination, in my opinion. This is why you can't oh, trust Christian. Nah. <laughs> no, no, no. We cannot trust you. It's too no. much. <laughs> the best combination with hot sauce? Yes. Ooh. You go I go honey and hot sauce. Is it, but is it breakfast? Ooh, is it guess. dinner? You know what I mean? It's just it's, it's whatever time. Yeah. You see, I've never been a breakfast person. Um, but that's that's amazing. Yeah. By the way, is it breakfast or is it dinner? It yes is the answer. <laughs> Eat it for both. Yes. <laughs> I also ooh, no, I also want Italian food. Well, I I've, I've been cooking Italian food, but I want Italian food. Yeah. Home. Okay. Damn. Uh, yeah. Oh, I was. I thought she was going to say travel. one thing. She went across. <laughs> no, 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 so you want all travel. of New York City lifted up? I want all of New York. <laughs> I miss home. I'm also curious about your uh, working with La Liga uh, now. The wh what's um, been anything interesting or a surprise? I mean, like uh, you know, I pay attention to La Liga, but really just like what you know, Barcelona, Real Madrid, like the really, really big games. And I know La Liga is trying to uh, you know just have a, a, a more of a, a footprint similar to like the the Premier League in the U.S. What's been like, uh, you know, the interesting things or fun things about working with uh, La Liga for you? Um, I, just, I really like how they're trying to hit every market where it's not just, they're not focusing in Europe and just Spain. They really want to work in North America, Mexico, right? They have um, a really big uh, following in Mexico, um, just all over the place where it's like, okay, we want to bring all these people together. And I think that's what makes the sport so beautiful, right? They, it brings people from all around the yeah, world yeah. together. So, um, that, and also that they're just constantly on their toes of trying to create content where they can relate to, to everyone, where it's not just they're relating to the 13, 16 year olds. No, they want to relate 13 year olds all the way up to like 60 year olds, you know, where all in one video. So yeah. I think that's what if I can that, make if I can make a suggestion, maybe uh, a video profiling all the incredible Dominican soccer players playing in La Liga. Uh, that would be pretty cool. You already you already have that connection. That'd be uh, pretty good. <laughs> Let's sprinkle yeah. in a Cubano or two. You know what I mean? <laughs> There's got to be in the be Segunda really División. There's got to be <laughs> someone who yells go. I mean, you know, I've been so stressed because I've been trying to figure out some content ideas just because the normal um updates you know weekly updates obviously because there's no games going on it's not as interesting so i'm like all right i was like what can we do i need to brainstorm what, what, who can i interview what, what can i do i want to make it different so um that's what we've been up to well you, so you talk, talk to talk to junior people uh from barcelona and be like yo mm -hmm. dude i know you play for the the u21s in in spain uh but <laughs> like you're the you're Dominican, you're bro. Dominican. You're Dominican. <laughs> Why aren't you playing? Okay. Yeah. I like how Christian is <laughs> taking like, our that. television show to try to get <laughs> Junior <laughs> Fifo to play for the Dominican maybe Republic. I can eat, yes, maybe I can. I can have like a Skype call with him and eat mango while like we're having a Skype call. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Look, you know, you do send Junior Fipo a, a, a hookah for the interview. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just get him ready. You know? Okay. That just... is genius. <laughs> Look, I, I think you, we should we should all to use our powers for good, right? Yeah. You know, and, <laughs> and, and, and let's save Dominican Balompié. All right, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, Let's just let's just use this <laughs> as funny. a as a soccer political stance to get the Dominican <laughs> Republic a better team. Thank Dude, you, I'm, I'm, well, imagine we could put Dominican Republic so, the, like soccer on the map if we like I literally. Like yeah. Well, well we just think, a little bit of influence. Nothing, though, if you if you think about it, well, Dominicans they produce really good athletes. It's just obviously they don't have the type of um, funding or 
Yeah. They have no one to support them with with football. Yes, baseball. Yeah, but other sports, they're fit like physically, physically. Yeah, they're built to play sports. You know, um, so it can be extremely. Successful. I can't wait. Imagine they get better, and Dominican Republic is the first national team to have their jersey manufactured by bootleg Givenchy. I mean, could you just imagine? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this would be amazing. <laughs> you would say something like that. <laughs> You would. <laughs> it's yo, it's gonna be it's the tightest kits in the world. Yeah, trust yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. They're the first national team to wear a painted on jersey. I mean, they're gonna be <laughs> you can see their chest hair through their kits. Yeah. <laughs> That's terrible. Yeah. So you so the national That's team is called funny. Los Tigres? All right, cool. Los no, no Tigres. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> so just uh, so last thing, uh yeah, as far as far as um, the, the any news about the the, the season in, in Colombia, um, is it is it generally just still up in the air? Uh, uh, it will. It, I know, like at least in, in New York, they're talking about like you know, at least in the U.S., they're talking about by, by like maybe June. Uh, that's when some form of live events will happen. Maybe with no with no crowds. Uh, are they are they telling you anything about what the nothing. possibility is? Absolutely, absolutely nothing. Okay. We have no news, um, but it's, it's, I mean, it's to be expected in Colombia, to be quite honest. <laughs> I love the country, but it, it's expected. It's expected everywhere, actually. Yeah, in yeah. Spain and Europe um, with the women's game. That's the last thing. I feel like that's the last thing on their mind right now. Uh, their main priority is just, all right, let's get everything going up and running and everyone healthy, right? Um, where we can get 10 people in the room and not get sick. Yeah. So, yeah. which I think is, it's complete insanity that we're going through something like this. I yeah. can't, I still can't even grasp what we're going through. I just pretend there's nothing going on in the world. Out there. I pretend there's snow out there and that's why I'm in my apartment. <laughs> that's how I'm yeah, living my life. Yeah, every time, yeah. I'm like, you know what? If I was able to stay in a house after my surgery, like I can do this. Yeah, 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 for sure. All right. All right. We'll be back with more Chelsea after this. Welcome back. We are still here with Chelsea Cabarro. We did it. We did it. Well, nice, fun did show. It. I'll even uh, bring in people from Barranquilla. Uh, Chelsea, is there anything uh, you want to let people know where people should follow you? Uh, how, maybe if the season does happen, where to, where to follow the season? Um, yeah, well, you can follow me on my social media platform. Um, I'm constantly posting things at Chelsea, C-H-E-L-S-Z-Z. Um, and I always put links also for the team, so you guys can just click on there and... You can follow the season. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Seriously, this hour just flew by. Thank you. No, no, you're, uh, you're a blast. It's Thanks like the for... Michael Jordan, the Michael Jordan um, Doc. documentary last night. Thank thank you again, Chelsea. Make sure you follow uh, at Fubo Sports uh, on all social media and also subscribe to the Fubo Sports YouTube channel. Uh, follow us at Soccer Cooligans and you can sub subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. So uh, we, usually, we usually end the show uh, as, uh, as normal. Uh, so uh, for Chelsea Cavarcas, my name is Christian Polanco. I'm Alexis Guerreros. And together, what are we? The Cooligans! The Cooligans!